Hey guys, so one of the things I wanted to, two things I want to show you real quick today. At the suggestion of one of the YouTube comments, and I'm really grateful for that. If you guys have any suggestions, you want to see something, uh, just comment and I'll, I'll give it a shot if I can. Uh, this thermometer right here is, is awesome. Somebody suggested that we use this thermometer. And as you can see, it, there's different levels. Yellow is optimal. Red means that I'm wasting fuel. And you can see I'm right at the edge of optimal. But I want to show you how responsive this needle this this is. So you can you can burn a lot and waste a ton of fuel if you want. Or if you want to get one of these thermometers, it was only like 10 bucks, I want to say, 10, 15 bucks at, at Lowe's. Um, then you can save a lot of money on fuel because uh, if it's in the yellow area, then you're you're not over using your fuel and you're not burning so hot that it can create some type of a risk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this this loop right here on the damper and I'm just going to close this a bit. Actually, I'm going to close it all the way just to show you how responsive this is. So while I'll tell you about the next thing, you're going to, you're going to notice that this needle is going to move from 500 degrees Fahrenheit uh, down. The needle is actually kind of moving slowly, I can even see. But while we're waiting for that, let me show you this other thing that we got. Also at the suggestion of one of your comments, I got a heat robber. And a heat robber is really nice. The concept is you put this on the flue and then it creates more surface area so you can get more heat. So not so much of your, your uh, heat is just going right out the flue. You got more surface area instead of just the pipe. So that's the concept behind that. And the other cool thing is, is it has a spark arrestor in it so that it minimizes the amount of embers that will be flying out into the woods or landing on your tent or whatever. And, the, and it just goes like this. <clears throat> now, to burst your bubble, I'm sorry to say, don't waste your time buying one of these. Um, as long if you're getting a Kodiak lodge tent like this and you're getting the Colorado cylinder spruce stove out of the box, it's not going to work. I put it on, and here's the problem. See, we have the joint clear up here. So when I stuck this on, it is so close to the ceiling that I don't feel comfortable, and I don't want to compromise anything or make any recommendations that are unsafe. So I wouldn't recommend it. Now, if I were really handy, I could take, I could create a new joint maybe down here, so that it was about right there. Uh, problem is, is I'm not handy with metal and stuff like that. So if you are, you know, let me know, P put a video up and I'll create a link and other people can see whether it worked out for you or not, but it didn't work out for me. The other problem is, is when I put it clear up here, the, the top of that flue was so top heavy that I couldn't get it to stabilize. I really just needed this joint further down here. I even try taking this one out altogether and sticking this directly into the stove and it doesn't fit. So no, uh, I have nothing but good things to say about Colorado Cylinder who, this is, these are their products besides the tent, which is the Kodiak brand. I like all the products, but don't waste your time. Learn from my mistake. Okay. Now you can see on the thermometer here in just a few minutes that it's gone down further into the yellow zone at about 460 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so if I want to get things roaring again, then I'm just gonna open the, the damper here. And let me just show you what kind of fire I have. It's not super hot, it's not super, if I could shove more wood in there if I wanted to and get that roaring even more. So anyways, it's been a couple months now that I've had this out. Um, it's been awesome. I What I really need is a nice hot day where it will just bake this tent and dry all the moisture that's on the outside. No moisture has gotten inside. Um, if it were to do that, the areas that are sagging a little bit from weeks and weeks of use and weight of snow would, would take its shape back. But it's going to be a couple weeks before I'm going to have any type of nice hot day like that. One more thing I wanted to show you. You can see that there's a big, there, I wouldn't say it's really big, but there is a gap right there where you can see daylight through here. This is, this is silicone right here. So what I do is I, I push it up carefully. I don't want to touch the stove, but I push it up a little bit. And in that way, if it's raining outside, the water's not going to pool around this. It's going to drip down from that. I could take one of those clamps, those metal clamps, like a five, six inch clamp, 
where you can screw it tighter and then hold that more secure. I haven't really had a need to do that because even when it's snowing like it was earlier today, any moisture that gets in and touches this flue or touches the stove just pss, just evaporates. It's just it's gone. So, but I did want you to see that. Um, that is maybe I'll try that in a, in another video if there's any interest. So, anyways, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please like the video. If you have any questions, just let me know uh, below and I will reply to you.